Hello, this is Bernard Ma. Uh, I am here with Philippe. Uh, we are at Cullen International. Philippe is one of the world's leading telecom and regulation experts. And um, I want to talk to Philippe about artificial intelligence and some of the regulatory implications around AI. I advise um, executives and businesses around the use of artificial intelligence and Things like security, regulation, data privacy, all these things come up all the time. So what, are, what, what do you see as some of the biggest challenges around artificial intelligence from a regulatory perspective? Before diving into artificial intelligence, one of the challenges always of regulating new technologies is that the regulator, the legislator, does not anticipate no what the technology will change in our way of lives, in, in the way companies and, and consumers... And things are moving so fast, so that's almost impossible, yeah. Exactly. So, as a, as a regulator, you're always torn between uh, regulating too much and then preventing the nice things from happening, or regulating too little and you have a disaster and you, 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 you basically accuse of not having stopped it. So, we, we, in terms of artificial intelligence, we, we very much at the, at the beginning, I'll say a word about privacy in a minute, but uh, for, in artificial intelligence itself, the steps that have been taken in Europe and, and in other geographies is basically to put ethics you know, at the center of the process. So, rather, rather than tell companies you can do this, you cannot do that, you know. We, there, there are some, some thinking and it, there has been some, some, for example in Europe we've got now guidelines on ethics and artificial intelligence that have been, that have been published that basically are not like super precise but they give a bit of a, a framework in terms of a, what companies, you know, what is reasonable for companies to, to start as an AI project and, and what should be, what should be uh, avoided. Um, so that, that's, that's one thing. Another uh, important question when it comes to artificial intelligence, this is particularly true in Europe, perhaps less true in, in Asia, where the Asians are really technophile. So whenever there is a new technology, they want it fast. You know? In Europe, uh, we, are a bit, we, are a bit the, uh, we have the mindset where there is a new technology if we first look at what is wrong. Huh? So, uh, Given, okay, that's, that's, that's... That. And I guess that the US sits somewhere in between. Probably, yeah, probably, yeah. probably, probably. Less uh, technophobe than the European, less technophile than the, yeah. than the Asian. And uh, in order, what the European legislators decided in Europe, in order to create trust and confidence in, in artificial intelligence, in what you could call in a more generic way, automated system, at least the automated system that create uh, rights and obligations for, for citizens. I'm not talking about automated system in a factory which have no impact on, on human beings, but mm -hmm. for automated system that impact our lives, there is an obligation for the citizen that is impacted. There is a right for the citizen, the consumer that is impacted by uh, the decision made by an automated system, there is the right to meet a human being, maybe the manager of a bank, it may be the manager that turned you down for, a, for a, a promotion, and to get a proper explanation about the criteria that they've led to uh, you being turned down for a loan or for a promotion or any decision on the algorithm. And this is a big challenge for some AI algorithms because they are literally black boxes. Exactly. We don't quite understand how they're making decisions, so this wouldn't work for any voilà. any decision to have implications for people, voilà. right? Voilà. Artificial intelligence algorithms are not simple co correlation between a few variables, which you could easily uh, explain with a simple equation, but are, are based on on not just a large amount of data, but a, a large number of different variables. Mm -hmm. And explaining exactly the impact of each of these variables on the outcome may be a challenge. Mm -hmm. So one, probably, probably one of the most important 
work that, that is underway at the moment, but we again really at the beginning. And it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big job for regulators. I think it's also a big job for artificial intelligence scientists Completely. who are well aware of that and are seeking to make their, uh, their algorithm more explainable Absolutely. and more transparent. Um, a third field where there is a lot of thinking going on, and again, we really at the beginning, <laughs> is the issue of the data sets. If you, if you uh, if, as a government, if you want to take full advantage of uh, the data economy, of uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, what do you need? You need scientists, you need good data scientists, you need uh, processing power. And the last thing you need is good data sets. And, uh, you want to make sure that a maximum use is made of the data. Mm -hmm. In a traditional world, uh, everybody is sitting on their data like squirrels are uh, sitting on their nuts. Uh, what government are trying to, to do at the moment is, is to find ways of uh, incentivizing uh, companies to share their data with others. Mm -hmm. It can be about setting, setting up marketplaces to trade data. It can be uh, encouraging standardization work so that we, by sector, we label the data sets in a, according to the same. Uh, and I see this in so many different sectors. I see this in healthcare, for example, where you have lots of individual companies collecting data, bringing it all together will mm -hmm. obviously be more valuable. Yeah. You see this in the transport industry. Yeah, so what the, are the challenges there? But the challenges are, it's, it's a matter of incentives, essentially. Uh, and let's start with the government. The government itself should lead by example, and, and all government around the world if so-called open data policies, whereby they, they've committed to put online in a digital readable uh, format all the data they have on whatever, without knowing who will use it. You know, that's, that's the notion of, uh, of open data. Now, if we, there is no debate anymore of principle about that, but the devil is in the implementation. You know, I'm the head of a department in a government of a given country, what is the incentive for me to spend valuable human resources and, and you know, storage capacity to actually put data online? I don't even know who's going to use them. You know, it's a bit, you need to believe that somebody, a clever entrepreneur will do something. Yeah, you've got the incentive side and, and I guess you have the regulatory side as well. That there are some regulatory implications well, of sending data into the cloud for someone else to use. Hello. Of course, the data that would be shared in this format would, of course, be uh, non-personal data or personal data with the, the consent of the, the citizen uh, uh, involved. It's not going, never going to be um, uh, data that would compromise the security of, of the country. Huh? So that's for the government. Now, well, let's look at another scenario, which is data held by the private sector but which the government needs to improve its policies. I mean, for centuries we have had national institutes of statistics in every country that are bothering you from statistics from time to time. And we know these statistics are, are really important for the government to, to optimize their policies. What we are going to have with uh, artificial intelligence is ideally more efficient government, more efficient governance, but in order to achieve that, the government will need to tap into many more data from the, from the private sector. And a big debate there is whether the government will, will pay, will remunerate the private sector for having data that are deemed useful for, I don't know, it can be to, to optimize the tourism policy, to optimize healthcare, almost everything. Huh? So this is, this is still a... And then last but not least, there is the third dimension. So we discussed government help, data held by the government, data held by the private sector but required by the government. And the, the last uh, scenario, the most difficult uh, from a regulatory point of view, is how do you optimize the sharing of data between private businesses? Mm -hmm. uh, 
Uh, we talked already about the incentives, huh? setting up marketplaces, standardization. Are there cases where we need we will need to go beyond that and mandate the sharing? That that's too early to say. Mm. But these are the sort of uh, issues on the table. Very good, fascinating. Thank you very much, Philippe. My pleasure. Thank you. If you would like to learn more, head to my website at bernardmar.com where you can find tons of articles, white papers and videos that will give you a lot more insights into real-world case studies and examples.